So, what are we doing today? Well, we're going to do some honing, finish honing on uh, my trusty Green's Wedge. You've seen this in a few videos. It's a staple in my hone testing regimen. It's not the only one, just uh, happens to be the one I take out when I want to shoot a clip. So what do we got? <clears throat> we got a um, Apache Gila, Black Gila. No, not Apache, it's Apache Strata. Uh, they come from Terry at Natural Homes. Um, friend of mine, Nelson, hooked me up with this piece, told me about it. Uh, I wasn't in the market for anything new and it sounded interesting. But, you know, I got new stones coming in all the time. I'm usually swamped. Um, an hour ago, this sink was full of J Nats that I just got that I just sealed. I had to lap them all down and now I got to start working on them so I can tell people which one does what and so on and so forth. Nelson, being the guy he is, picked up one of these, sent it over to me, gifted it to me, and um, it didn't look like this when it came. Um, but that was an awesome thing to do. Anyway, when I got it, it was bigger, uh, not so angular, more rounded sides, loaded with, um, well, if it was a J Nat, you'd call it skin. <laughs> this is uh, Terry's work here. I didn't touch that. Uh, that's from his saw. And um, tried it. I liked it. Uh, I didn't get into it right away. Put the stone on my bench and I looked at it. And I do that. And uh, so I get dialed into it. And I saw the piece you see here. I saw it in the larger stone. So I mapped it out. And I cut it myself. Trimmed it to size. Got some nice sides here now. They're all very clean. And uh, now I have a stone that like, I really want to work with. Where the other one was like cool. But it was more difficult. And uh, that skin type stuff on the side was kind of making me shy away from using that edge. Um, it just looked dangerous. I didn't test it. I didn't put it under a microscope. I didn't analyze it. I didn't send it to a laboratory just didn't look right. Um, I have a microscope. I have a pretty damn good one actually. Um, but I don't look at it first and then figure it out. I figure it out and then I use what I see through the scope to add to my findings. Um, my face knows more about edges than any scope or anybody's eyes will ever be able to tell me. <clears throat> so anyway, I got this thing. And uh, a lap, and it was a bear. You can see the water just kind of like beads up on it. And I had to lap the top down, make it flat. Um, now if you can hear that, very high. Yeah, get something that's high pitched tone. Um, looking at the stone, pretty certain this is a type of uh, chalcedony, like agate, jasper. Any of those um, quartz type stones, they're uh, all over the uh, southwest, all over the country actually, the southwest you can just like walk on, kick a rock and pick one up. Um, Terry though goes like way out into the middle of the buttholio and uh, find this particular stone and uh, yeah he goes to great lengths. Uh, he found it, he tested it, he liked it and um, I think he picked a winner. Well, I know he picked a winner. Um, so, uh, you know, you can go to a rock show and get a piece of jasper. I have one. You can hone on it. I have. Um, it can be okay or not or pain in the ass because uh, sometimes the uh, surface on a jasper will polish unevenly. And then you wind up with, like, uneven spots on your edge. I don't know how to explain it exactly, but... Just imagine this super hard stone becoming glazed in sections. Um, not very in a, not in a very uniform way. So your blade's going over that, and those surfaces act differently on different parts of the blade at different times. It, you know, you just run into a problem. Um, I tested some uh, translucent uh, 
Chalcedony not too long ago. Very nice though. Worked very well. But it still, after a while, gave me that like weirdo polishing thing. This though doesn't do that. Why? Who the freak cares? I just know that it doesn't. You know, I suppose I could send it out to a lab and have somebody give me like an exacting breakdown and everything, but you know, I I'm holding razors here. I I'm not developing rocket fuel. Alright, so it's been out for a while. Um, been using it a couple of different ways. Uh, this is a piece of uh, coma, coma nagura from Japan. Um, all I'm going to do here is, uh, and I'm not raising a slurry or nothing, and uh, some slurry might come out, but, and if I did, yeah, I could hone on it. But that's not my intention. Basically, what I want to do is just get the top of this stone clean, clear, fresh, even. This is an incredibly consistent uh, nugger. Uh, this is from like uh, the 50s. Uh, some guy who worked there. I have his name somewhere in my files. Um, he was a miner and he came home with stones. And this is what uh, you know, people in Japan, people in the business, whatever the trade, they'll say this is the real coma. And I'll get into that in another video, but suffice to say, it's hard, it's fine. Like the surface right here, you think you could like finish hone on it, and you probably could, it's a little small. Maybe I should try that for another video. Anyway, I just wanna make sure I don't have anything uh, on here I don't want. Yes, I do this all the time. No, I probably don't have to. But the one time I do have to, if I don't do it, I'll be sorry. Why don't I use a diamond agura? Now, these things are incredibly fast. I'll go right in here. And, oh, boom, I got slurry, right? These stones, first of all, you've been doing this for a while. You kind of like, you learn stuff. And one of the things you learn is a stone like this, with this kind of makeup, like, say, for example, a translucent Arkansas. Or, uh, oh yes, I'm going to say it, surgical black Arkansas. Um, you don't slurry that snow. What's the point? And if you did, why would you use a diamond agura? For what point? What is this? 1.2K. 1K. I was using 1K at bevel set, right? Why would I create a grit of stone particles of a bevel setting, you know, zone? when I'm trying to find a finish. You know, if you had a synthetic, you'd be looking at like, what, a 10, 12K for the Gok 20 guys, you know, 20K. <clears throat> um, so yeah, you don't want to do that. So like, here's a little tiny piece of the rock, right? Uh, let me see, run some water. I know, it kills the audio, but gotta do it. You know, there's a little bit of slurry in there. But if this was like, you know, just about any other type of rock, there'd be a tremendous puddle of slurry, like what you saw from the Makama Nagura, the coma. When I cut this up, I called Nelson. I said, you want a slurry stone? Wrote back, uh, how does it slurry? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just, we call these things slurry stones, but like what I meant was, you know, you want a dressing stone. And uh, just give it a couple of rubs here and everything feels like Gucci, you know. Oh, and the other thing, uh, you know, the diamond agar has like little points of diamonds here, they're like cutting into your stone, leaving all these like, I don't know, for lack of a better term, micro serrations in your finishing stone. Does that make sense to you? It shouldn't. You know, if you're talking about like, you know, a synthetic with a ceramic binder, yeah, that stuff kind of heals itself. So maybe, you know, you want to clean it down. Um, you're certainly not going to use a 12K with slurry. And if you do, dude, stop doing that. That's a waste of time. All right. Um, although I did read about a couple of guys using slurry on the 20K uh, gawk. And yeah, I don't get that either. <clears throat> to 
me. You finish in on a stone like this, you just want a smooth surface. You don't need a lot of water. Here's my razor. Green's wedge, heavy grind. Been through hell. Gives up a great shave. So, hear that? That's a high pitched tone. Alright. You hear anything? No, you shouldn't. You're not gonna. There's like nothing going on here. I can hear a little something. I don't think the this iPhone here is capable of <clears throat> capable of picking it up. Now, what did I do with this before I started? I dropped it down to what you might want to call like an eight or ten or twelve k edge. You know, I work with J nets, and uh, so I got this like target point. I know how it feels. Uh, no, I didn't put it on the scope. No, I don't have to look at everything on the scope. Um, You know, I'm making fun of scopes, but you know we all use them. Um, those cheapo USB scopes—I mean, they give you a look, but they're not really giving you what I call a great look. Um, so it's kind of hard to see for real what it is you're trying to see in the blade. Um, go to optical scope, one made for metallurgy, reflected light. That's a real deal. Doesn't mean you can't use the other stuff, but you know. I have one of those USB scopes. And when I got my Olympus, man, were my eyes open. Anyway, so I got this like really glassy feel here. I don't have too much feedback, but there's some. Another thing about the Gila. Gila, excuse me. Um, black Gila. A Gila monster. Ever see a Gila monster? I have. I'm fat, slow, and lazy. This is not a fat, slow, and lazy storm. Gila's a poisonous. Yeah, it's true. You know how they get you? They bite you, they have really strong jaws, and then they start munching, they start grinding, and their poison comes out like, I don't know, something in their mouth, and it gets into you that way. The trick is, get them off you. They don't like to let go. They're kind of funny like that. I guess they figure once they bite you, it's the point of letting go. Anyway, and it's a pretty stone. It's got nice movement in it. Um, this line here, there's nothing. There's nothing there. Um, this water thing. Uh, it's very slow. And this nice rock behaves like most rocks of this genre. Um, show you something in a sec. Yeah. Okay, so I got like a bunch of strokes in here, a bunch of laps. There's some stuff. Cold paper towel. I don't know if you can see that. Right. See any swerve? No, there's no swerve. So you think you're pulling off metal? Oh. Maybe little itsy bitsy teensy weensy little tiny smidgens of steel, maybe. Mostly what you're doing, polishing, pushing the edge into shape, um, you're doing some burnishing perhaps. Alright, you touch on here with a rock like this, gotta be rock solid. Uh, rock solid. Um, let me clarify that. You gotta have a light touch. You gotta learn to have touch and with a stone like this to get it to work right it's got to be light because if you're pressing down well you're probably going to wind up killing your edge it's a hard rock I mean really freaking hard lapping this thing forget about it if I never have to lap another one of these I'll be happy but you put in the work 
and you reap the benefits. My surgical black oak. And it was like three years of on off lapping before I got it to like, you know, dead flat. I'm afraid to check it because if it's out, then I have to start all over again. And it's like, oh God, just the thought of doing that. It's a 10 by 3. Even, uh, you know, using silicone, uh, as I see, silicone carbide. Even that. 10 by 3 is a lot of surface area. This guy right here. Look how big he is. Was it four by two or something? Uh, I don't know. It, it must have taken me like close to 45 minutes, maybe an hour, just to get it to dead flat. And then the top wasn't surfaced. Then I had to go through that whole process. Now, you want to play? You got to pay. And I don't mean money. I'm talking about that, but it's got to be dead flat. It's got to be totally polished. You can't have. You gotta get down there um, and really look at the surface of the stone. You know, I, I put it under my scope and it was like little cross hatch marks everywhere. You can't see them with your naked eye, but they were there. People wonder why their edges chip. I don't know. Too much pressure, using a diamond nigger, doing other crazy shit because you, you know, read about it on a forum. Honing is common sense. If you think about it, at this like ridiculously thin piece of steel and this like super ridiculously hard stone, do you want <clears throat> those little grooves that to this piece of steel look like a freaking mountain? Do you want to like bang it right in? No, you don't want to do that. You want to be gentle. Common sense. Alright. So, I think that's about all I want to do right here with that for the moment. I'll dry this off. <clears throat> um, now I mentioned, uh, you want to play, you got to pay. A couple of people have remarked about the cost of the stone. Have you ever dug a stone out of the ground? Have you ever cut one? I have. <clears throat> okay, I've chipped my fair share of stones out of the walls of quarries. I've slabbed up a bunch of stones on enough diamond saws, and so on and so forth, polishing all of that. I did that when I was a kid. I grew up with like bags of garnets and piles of agates and, you know, bounty of barrel laying all over the house. Um, that was my family, that's kind of like what we did. Um, Alright, so this is dry now, right? <clears throat> While people were out breaking in their baseball gloves, I was trying to figure out how to polish a, <clears throat> an opal cab. It's kind of dry now. I don't know if you can kind of see it. Let me check that. Yeah, I'm picking up. You see how it's even and it's continuous, like a sort of a matte surface. Yeah, this stone is really nice. Uh, you know, it's out of all the different uh, types of stone like this that I've tested to date. You know, various jaspers, ocean jasper, um, agate, and petrified uh, wood, all basic, similar type of stone but all still a little different too. Uh, it's a fantastic world. Chalcedony, uh, uh, <clears throat> agate, very similar stones with different crystal and makeup. Agates have a more fibrous type of thing going on. And I don't mean fibrous like, you know, flax linen. It's just how the crystallines lay out. Uh, Think they're awesome. Alright, so <clears throat> something I haven't really done before. I add this stuff here and uh, can I show it to the camera? And it's like a little blue magic bottle. Alright, what is it? You well, know, it's oil. It's oil, but it's not oil. It's an oil. But Keith, you hate oil. Yeah, pretty much. I do. 
but my tool for the right job and this is the right kind of oil all vegetable never goes rancid water soluble <clears throat> cleans up with uh, soap and water Viscosity is like dead balls on the money right for me. You know, mineral oil, to ick, thin it out with kerosene, stinks like crap. Uh, I mean, I like kerosene, but not in my home. Um, yeah, I'm weird. I like petroleum products. The odor, I don't know, the fragrance, I should say, is, I don't know, reminds me of work, but I just don't want it in my house. It penetrates things, and I got food here. Anyway, so um, can you see now how much gloss is on there? That's the oil. So, light, baby, light. I mean, stupid light. I'll be honest, the, the edge was, you know, before we got here, I was in a good place already. This is like sprinkles on the cake, man. So what am I getting here? Well, oil doesn't have any abrasive in it. So people tell, and people say things like, oh, use oil, you can get a sharper edge. And I wish they'd be a little clearer about it. Basically, oil's a lubricant, right? And, uh, what it's doing is it's like a little buffer between steel and stone. Now you can emulate that with touch. And theoretically, any edge you can make on oil, you should be able to do without oil. But every now and then, because we're human beings, you add something to the equation. And you wind up with a nice result that you're not going to get any other way. Why bother? Well, why the hell not? Sure, I could have shaved. I could have shaved with it before I started this video. Would have been a good shave. Definitely. After the water cycle. would have had a really damn fine shave. But what I've found is putting a little buffer on top of here, and it doesn't have to be this. This is my own special thing that I'm making up over here, but um, you know, you can put glycerin in water, you can use soap, uh, soap and water, Dawn, one dot of Dawn, boom. You create the same type of effect. You just add in a little bit of lubrication there, a little bit of buffer, and you're effectively creating like a lightness of touch. So if you think about it on a microscopic scale, imagine a whole bunch of triangles. And you put the oil down and only just the very tips of those triangles stick out of the oil. And that's kind of what we're doing here. The rest, uh, the rest, you know, the oil creates like a layer, a perfect layer. I wish you could feel this. I wish there was a way to get feeling, you know, into the video. Because, like, it's nuts, right? The blade does not want to come off the stone. Notice that it's very even. Not running into drag anywhere in one spot. Or, and that's the beauty of this stone. It's very hard. Its effect on the steel is that of a very fine stone. It's a great finisher. And cost. Yeah, I started to talk about that before. Cost. Yeah, so Terry goes out into the middle of nowhere and he's got to climb over heel on monsters and, you know, battle rattlesnakes and God knows what else. Endure the heat, the sand, the dirt. <clears throat> I can tell you, I've been through that and it's hard work. And he gets a slab of this, and then he packs it out, 
You know, so what does he get? 20 pounds. Ever pick up 20 pounds and carry it across the desert? <clears throat> it's work. You know, he takes it home, he cuts it, slabs it up, and, uh, you know, he puts it on a site. And, you know, then people start complaining, oh, it's too expensive. Hey, you go buy something else, man, you know? <clears throat> this isn't about, like, I can get the same age. It doesn't matter. It's bullshit, okay? Just stop talking right there. Okay, that is like the most ridiculous argument I've ever heard. This guy on Google Plus uh, says J knots are too expensive. All right, they're too expensive for you. That doesn't mean they're just too expensive. You get to a point. It's not about. It's not just about performance. It's not about like what you can, you know, emulate it with or, you know. You want to be cheap? That's fine. It, it's all good. You know, let's say for a while, let's say you want a less expensive set. Maybe cheap is too, you know, whatever. That's why they make Crocs. You know, you can put that stuff on a belt and strap away on it and go shave eyebrows off a caterpillar. Yeah. There's no joy. There's no beauty. There's no zen. There's no aesthetic. Nothing to learn about. Freaking pink pigment in an oil binder laying on a belt. And I use pastes, but I'm just saying. I'm using this too. And while I didn't buy it, I would buy one. <laughs> Thanks to Nelson, I don't have to. But, um, yeah. It's just like orgasmic. I have used this oil on a number of stones, and um, the feel on uh, the healer here is different than others. I can't explain it. <clears throat> now, sometimes you put down oil, and it's like there's no stone. Here, there's definitely stone. There's definitely feedback. I'm definitely hitting steel. And I'm definitely getting a result. You'll notice I am not interjecting with my microscope and so on and so forth. You just gotta roll with me on this. I put about 10, maybe 12 edges off this stone under my scope. I don't image everything because, well, it's a lot of work and I got a lot going on between my day job and hones and straps and stuff and just don't have time for it. Use it for inspection. I mean, the other thing is, you know, images on TV, you know, the internet, you know, if you got a guy who can't hone, then he picks this up and then he shows you a crappy bevel. Or well, maybe he just sucks at hoeing, you know? <clears throat> and he shows you good pictures from another stone. Well, maybe he's good on that stone, but like, you know, a jerk with this one. You never really know. So if you got a microscope and you're using it, your picks are good for you. They're like a benchmark. You know, there's a comparison there. When you start looking at other people's stuff, you know, people got all kinds of agendas. You know, they want to be the, the new Mac on the block. They want to push Lynn Abrams out of the box and become the honing guru of the fucking Western civilization. <clears throat> Anybody with that kind of goal is never going to push Lynn Abrams anywhere. All right? The guy's got mad touch and style. You may not like him or whatever, but... Another topic. Like this for anti-social media. Everybody's in that. Me, I'm just a guy who hones. I like stones. I have a little bit more of an understanding about different types of stones than most people. I, you know, and I say that, you know, it's true. Like I grew up. I never got away from it. Stones and learning more and more about them. You know, I 
that went to a uh, wet shaving. Uh, I had already had a set of ox 20 years, 25 years, and uh, not just one, several, many sets of ox. None of this is near to me. Razors in there, but, you know, toning and sharpening. It's two planes of steel, sharpen them. Come to a, a G, and then you go. All right, it gives the water, but yeah, that was dawn magic stuff. Love dawn. All right, so show you this. dries, no sign of the oil, it's not soaking anything in, if it did it wouldn't be the end of the world, but there you go, you see, that's dry, no sign of the oil, back to the matte surface, anyway, that's the uh, black healer, patchy black healer, great stone, <clears throat> why would you want it? Uh, you know, want a different flavor, different look. I'm tired of reading about, you know, how so and so with his yellow green labeled boxed Escher is uh, knocking out edges. You know, and he paid what, like a thousand dollars for that stone? So you're going to drop 400 on one of these and you wipe the floor with that Escher edge. And when I say wipe the floor, I mean it. Doesn't mean the Escher Edge is bad. I'm just saying, this guy right here takes things to another stratosphere. <clears throat> now, doesn't do it like magic. You don't just have it and touch the blade to it. You gotta have your bevel set, your groundwork following the bevel, your mid-range, I guess you wanna say. Bevel to me is 1 to 5K, right? Bevel setting is not an event. It's because you went through 1K and now you're like, what's that asshole term? Tree topping arm hairs. Oh, stupid shit. Yeah, right? You just started the bevel. You found the bevel. Finish it somewhere around 5K. Put a polish on it. Get it up a little higher, 8, 10, 12. And jump over to this black gear, gear excuse me, <clears throat> and you're off to the races. Shaving Nirvana doesn't happen automatically, though. You got to do your part, but that's honing. <laughs> 